back in touch with us there, Kendall. How you doing, sir? It looks like you're working on your beard just like I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. My wife told me as long as I can keep it cleaned up and keep it nice, uh, I can keep it for a while. <laughs> nice. Hey, I got to brush mine. Otherwise, it gets, it gets pretty insane when I pull it out to the side. <laughs> but yeah, you got a nice and down the side. I'm, I just have it combed today. But great. <laughs> Great having you on the show. And I know we've had you on the podcast a couple times. And what I want to know from you, you being an offensive lineman, how excited were you that Najee Davenport, a running back, got drafted in the first round? I think it was great, man. I really do. His style of play, I've seen it for the last couple of years, being on the Auburn offensive staff here and watching how he ran the football against us. I think he fits the mold perfectly for what Pittsburgh is looking for. That's great. And now for this round, since we've already got our running back, you as an offensive lineman, are you expecting an offensive lineman pick here coming up as the next pick? I would think so. Uh, I'm just looking at from the way the needs that we have right now up front. Yeah. I think it would be a, a good pick for the Steelers to pick somebody on the offensive line. If not, uh, I think they might address the linebacker position. Great. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because it, it, they've got a couple options to go. As uh, Dave Damashak here is with us as well, Kendall, and I also have Colton Gesser in, in here as well. And um, it's just been so fun to be following this. And and uh, we're we've been saying the entire time too. We don't know how this is going to go. We've got some talent dropping. Mm -hmm. Could it be tight end? Could it be tackle? Could it be center? We're going to be finding out here in another couple picks. But it's a it's an exciting time for us to I be. I believe here. Pittsburgh's on the clock now. I believe Pittsburgh's on the clock. Hey, Kendall, while they're on the clock, what okay. I mean, get, lay your expert eye on Banner and Chooks. Do you think that, do you see the room um, for them to get better? Do you see potential in either or both of those guys? Because I think that really is what decides what they do right now. Obviously, some of these uh, tackles, the big names, I think the last big tackle, although there are a couple of guys out there. Do, do, do you anticipate those guys elevating their games respectively in 2021 or what we've seen is what they are as pro football players. No, I think there's a there's still room for them to be able to get better. Um, you you got to give Clem a chance to get his hands on them and, and work on them. Um, I think that's only fair. Yeah. And then also too, um, it's just it, it was an off year last year. It, it really was just dealing with COVID and everything else, the training and figuring out how to take care of yourself as a player. Um, they know what to expect. They know what to go into and, and how to prepare differently. So I think it, it'll be good for them this time around. Nice. And the pick is in for the Colts. They're going to be picking here uh, very soon. We've invited back Bill Wyshynski and Job Morrison, who are writers over at SteelerNation.com. We like to get everybody's reaction, of course, right when we first learn who the pick is going to be for the second round. Um, and it's going to be coming down to crunch time now, obviously. And once we make that pick, I'd like to get opinions from all of you, starting with you, Kendall, okay. and see, hear how everybody thinks that that went and if it was a good pick and uh, how we can move forward. So hopefully we will all be excited here in the next 10 minutes or so. Let me ask a question. What, from, from all of you guys, what do, what do you think they're going to do? Uh, I'm hoping personally for a center. Uh, I, was, I was hoping maybe Humphreys here. Uh, what were you thinking, Dave? Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I don't pretend that I know what 300-pound men lean good on other uh, big guys. I defer to guys like Kendall on that. Yeah. But by all accounts, Creed Humphrey, for what it matters in 2021, we can get a little crazy with this whole, like, he's a stealer. But there wow. is kind of a through line. And wow. for what they specifically need, I think it is Creed Humphrey. By the way, he's been described to me. Yeah with with his uh his nasty disposition that is exactly what they what they lacked last year and Steelers pick is now in and with the you know first pick of round two uh, it's sponsored by tick pick that is t-i-c-k-p-i-c-k.com same seats better prices perfect place if you want event tickets with no service fees go to tickpick.com thank you for working in that sponsor there guys now we can get excited they were on the clock. It seemed like for a short amount of time and in true Steeler fashion. Or Wait, before up. you say it, do you want to hold hands or what? Right. Do do? <laughs> I don't know what we should be doing here. Right. Like, I'm not sure which way it looks. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> know. Agree. I'm yeah. still, so, so would you, so would you guys be upset if they go Mayfield here from Michigan? He shouldn't be here. 
This is a first round talent tackle. He shouldn't be here. I, he projects to be a right tackle from what I've read, but it, uh, Kendall would know better than I. Hey, the guy has the ability to play left, will probably end up being better at right tackle, but at least you know you can, you can put him over there and he can still produce for you. Like you said, first round talent, if you can get it now, why not? But I do agree with the, the center part, but if you can get him, get him. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Because you always got him there just in case something. I hate addressing that, really. Right. Yeah, this is here we go. It's coming in now. It's coming in. Oh, and it's Franco doing it. Franco's oh, gonna Franco that's right. Oh. One Harris got drafted yesterday. The other Harris coming to make in the announcement. Oh, what is Franco? Anyone seeing this, Dave? You've seen how tiny the terrible towel was that he was waving? What's well, oh, a mask? He's a oh, is that what it was? Is that what he was yeah, waving? It's a terrible towel mask. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, All right. 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 Franco, gets to, Franco gets away with that. <laughs> I wasn't sure what he was waving. Those sad, sad Browns fans. It must be so awful. Pat Fryermuth. Pat Fryer. It is. is the tight end from Penn Whoa. State. Yes. Wow. Uh, Franco wow. loves it. Yeah, they've decided to bolster that spot. A lot of people have been projecting Pat as being a Heath Miller type of tight end. Hey. So good blocking tight end. Can make yeah. plays downfield. Solid, solid player. So, and, and probably the best all around tight end in the draft with Pitts being so much more of a receiver uh, okay. and a blocking okay. tight end. So this is uh, one of the ways that I was talking in the beginning of the show that I wouldn't be upset with if they ended up going tight end here in this spot. Yeah, I, I like that. I think that's when you, like you said, you get a Heath Miller type, you can't beat that. I mean, if he even scratches the surface of Heath, you got you a hell of a player. You really do because I, I love the way Heath, played the game, he could catch, and he was an extension of offensive lineman. He was an honorary offensive lineman in my mind. So uh, I think that's a great pick if he can do that. And how right. is it for you then, being an offensive player, it seems like tight end is almost an extension of the offensive line, especially when you're big on the goal line, you bring in sometimes the extra tight end on the, on the field. How important is it for linemen to communicate with tight ends in the blocking game? It's very important, um, especially – when you get a tight end that's attached to the line of scrimmage, him being able to see things coming off the edge and relaying the information quickly, that was something that Heath Miller was really good at. Um, going back to uh, Mark Bruno, Bruno yeah. was awesome at that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, I was shaking my head, you're shaking your head, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. He was awesome. Yeah, I love Bruno. Um, love Bruno. <laughs> so I Bruno really was like a, a, was really at most of his career, a sixth offensive lineman. There you he go. Was, his yeah. peak year was right before you came. Yep. 2001. Yep. And he got hurt for the year. And that yep. was something that was very overlooked on that 2001 team. This yep. team's a blocking machine. Yeah. And the one thing I think that's the issue right now these days is that kids are coming from spread offenses. Mm -hmm. And you basically got a, a oversized wide receiver. And it's hard to find a big guy that can block, that actually wants to do it now. Mm -hmm. And so this kid here, if he wants to do it at all, and he got a little bit of that in him, that's perfect for what Pittsburgh is looking for. So I really hope that he can do that. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic. Now, Dave, I want to go to you too as well. Um, what do you think about the Steelers going tight end with this pick? Well, I was just joking 20 minutes ago that it'd be funny if they didn't take an offensive lineman here, <laughs> and now here we are. <laughs> Makes me a little nervous. I'm not going to jive you, but but – I do like it, you know, obviously Matt Canada ushers in a, a new era, but I do think about 2018, the Steelers would go in a formation with Levy and Bell, understandably, now they do have, uh, you know, a, a high pedigree runner to put behind Roethlisberger. And by the way, they still have Derek Watt. We'll see if they ever actually throw uh, two runners uh, on the field at the same time. Uh, with Canada, but they really were effective with two tight ends. And obviously that's what Tom Brady did yep. a lot of on the way to the Super Bowl mm -hmm. this past year. You see what Belichick just did up in Foxborough loading up with two tight ends, one a pass catcher and Johnny Smith, the other a hammer of a blocker who could also catch the ball. That's kind of now where the Steelers are. They can put two tight ends on the field, work those seams. You have a, uh, you have Najee Harris, so you have to pay attention to as a defender and that, and that forces a choice if you have Deontay Johnson or Chase Claypool or both of those guys on the field with those two tight ends, 
a single back or a full back in front of him, you have to make a, a choice and it's not a good one. Pick your poison. If you're the safety, you're going to bring one of the safeties up to stop, uh, to stop Harris. Well, Deontay Johnson's going to whip whoever you got uh, singled up. And so is, uh, is Chase Claypool on the deep ball. And those seams are going to be opened up. I kind of like it, but there is the practical need still for offensive line. But, but I, I, I'm not going to get pessimistic. I told you that already. This is good. This is good. We still have more. We still have another draft pick tonight, let alone right. tomorrow. Let's not get, <laughs> let's not get too upset yet. Yes. Yeah, sure. uh, Stryker and I went through some film and we caught several times where we tried to go an extra lineman out there and uh, our next tight end. And that just wasn't getting that, you know, that, that good yeah. blocking on the end. Uh, yeah. You know, this, this was an this, uh, against yeah. Washington where he could have just put yep. a, a just body on a guy. And yeah. Touchdown. Yeah. The same thing with Eric Ebron on the one play, two on the goal line where we got tackled in the backfield where Snell was starting to take off and jump into the end zone, got tackled by the legs. But this is, this is the commitment to the run. I mean, it also, you know, tight end is just as important if you're going to commit to that run to get a blocking tight end, somebody that can come in in those extra tight end set, sets and make sure to set that edge to get the extra blockers from coming in and making these plays in the backfield that was just killing the Steelers last season. Yeah. Colton, how do you feel about this draft pick, man? I know you're smiling. Um, I'm very, very, <laughs> I don't want to be negative about it because okay. I well, think still be, just be honest. How do you feel? I mean, you, you can feel how you want to feel. I would prefer them to go Creed or Mayfield. I think Mayfield sitting there, someone's going to get fantastic value. Mm -hmm. Um, we saw what happened with Banner. I'm not wishing anyone to get hurt. I'm glad he's healthy, but you just don't know. But at the same time, the way Kevin was talking yesterday, he knows more than any of us would know. He, the offensive line group, he says there's a lot more talent there than the perceived media would actually think. So if that's the case and the Steelers trust what they have, I'm all for it. And as I said with the defense and the corner help, maybe that was another spot. We had the kids sitting there from Washington possibly – um, and they also have Jesse James as a free agent. So I think they could have possibly filled the void with tight end there, but um, I trust Pittsburgh drafting. So I'm not going to hit it anymore. I would have liked to see one of those really good offensive linemen that's sitting there, but I'm they would be, a, the, they'd be in even worse shape a year from now though, to play devil's advocate. They'd be even yeah. worse shape. And I mean, they, you know, Eric Ebron isn't a tight end to Kendall's, nope. to Kendall's point, not the, yeah. you know, practically speaking, he's obviously not a, uh, a true tight end and he's gone after this year. And so they, yeah. they, it would be literally barren. Now Gentry maybe is one of the project guys and maybe he can be their third tight end the Raider coming up through. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, yeah, I, I hear you, but offensive line, it's really hard to get too passionate about it because like I say, Kendall knows, we don't know who, what I, I suspect that, but from, Colbert to, to Tomlin to Canada to Clem, they have a better grasp of what's available to them coming up here in round, rounds three and four um, to address that offensive line and what position they specifically need. It's speculative on our part that we, that they definitely need a tackle. Like says who, if Colbert and Clem yeah. and everybody in between feels like, Oh, no, we're fine with yeah. Chukes. We're fine with Chukes. And uh, they're, we're going to make a go of it with, with those two tackles that yeah. you're going to be surprised at how good they are. Then, you know, then this is a, a, a banner pick. They are, if nothing else, I know offensive line matters clearly, but they are officially loaded up uh, offensively outside of the question mark that remains at, uh, at offensive line. Like I said, Dotson yesterday kind of makes me feel a little bit better on this pick again. You know, Kendall and De Kevin would know best what's going on up front with the line and what, because they have experience. We don't, we're just talking heads sitting here, what our opinions are. So I, I have to agree with you on that. <laughs> so uh, Bill, I wanted to check in with you too quickly. What are your thoughts on the on drafting the tight end out of Penn state? Well, I, I really, I'll go back to what I'm saying. Uh, with, when we won that, uh, we almost went to the Super Bowl in 2001 and made that deep run. Uh, that line in 2005 was, you know, that was just a you know, beast mode line that you guys had uh, together there. But both those lines had that tight end that was going in there and putting in the block. So there were six blocking uh, players that were physical and engaging up front. If, you know, if he's somebody 
they're going out there and engaging up front blocking. In essence, we've got an offensive lineman who will also catch the ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the big thing. And I, I love Bruner. I loved he, and they got in there and got this going to a lot of reasons that there some of those holes were open. So, yeah, I like the idea of getting a center because, you know, generally you know more than us, of course. Uh, you, you're next there to Hardings, and he's over there, to, you know, veteran, mm -hmm. call out stuff, whatnot. Maybe they feel good about Benny doing that, you know. Uh, yeah. that, that, and, At least on our board. Probably somebody who would be uh, – Green probably would have been somebody who would have been sitting this year most likely. And you know, got somebody who will go in there and play a little more. So, yeah. Bill, at least on our board, we had uh, the next three linemen that we had listed on the Steeler way to draft board by uh, by Ben McCallion. Uh He had Creed Humphrey, Josh Myers, and Trey Hill listed as third rounders. So Steelers might be confident that they're going to be picking up a, a, a center here with their next pick with so much center talent being here uh, in that block for the third round. So we'll have to say, and Job, I want to run to you quickly too and just get your quick thoughts on, the, uh, on Pat Fairmuth coming to the Steelers. Well, I love it. Uh, real quick, Kendall, War Eagle, Dave, awesome to uh, be chatting with you. I used to really like your NFL uh, little things you used to do. Yeah. So Thank you. now that that's out of the way, um, I really like it uh, to the point where we're talking about Heath Miller. It has been a it's been a long time. Uh, I know it's only been six years, but Heath Miller is just a rare not only talent to replace, but a character guy, too, you know. He was someone who just came in, worked hard, and executed. That's something we've really missed. And, uh, I mean, we, we've tried to replace him a few times. Uh, Jesse James was a solid guy, but he wasn't he, the Heath Miller level that they're looking for. And uh, what's that guy's name? Green, who we had in 2016. Ladarius yeah, Green. Green. Yeah. I love yeah. Ladarius Green before he got the concussion yeah. problems. Yeah, I think he could have been close because his blocking game wasn't horrible, but his receiving game was, like you said, it was it was good when he was healthy. Um, and Ebron, like Dave said, he's not the, the tight end, traditional tight end, if you will. Um, so I no really use. like this. He's, no, he's of no use on on the hip of either of those uh, of either of those tackles. I mean, that, right. I think that's well said that he's a six lineman on yeah. the field, or at least that's the way he projects. Let's hope he is that. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. I, Good call. Absolutely. I think a big question, Kendall, I have uh, for you is because, uh, uh, you know, people tell uh, uh, like the offensive line is a collective and that makes sense that you don't have to have superstars on it, but you just can't have out of the five spots. You can't have a weak link. If you have one bum guy out of five, that it drags the whole thing down. Um, Center is one thing. DeCastro had a down 2020. I think I keep, I, I, I look at his, um, from a human level, I look at his quotes last year, all through the season. I keep saying, what, what's up with DeCastro? Like he was having an existential crisis and it was fine that he was with, with COVID. It was like, why are we even playing? I don't know if this is the right thing for us to be playing mm -hmm. football with what's going on and everything. It seemed like he was legitimately kind of like, I don't know if I want to be doing this right now. What do you think about at this stage of his career and what you know about the Castro is, is, is he another guy who might bounce back in a big way? And if he does, obviously he plays at a pro bowl or potentially even all pro level. Um, I honestly think so. COVID you guys have dealt with it. I have too. Um, all everybody in this country's world is dealing with it. It affects people differently. And when you have a job, such as I, like the Castro and I used to do, there's a lot of stress that people don't realize that you're under, that you have to perform. And when you look at Cap the Castro and the type of player he is, his mind wasn't in it. Like you said, the comments that he made, when you're not mentally in the right space, you've heard this cliche a thousand times, mm -hmm. it's the game is more, more mental than it is physical. When you ain't in it mentally, you might always forget that your body's not going to respond the way you want it to, no matter how hard you try. So I honestly think since he's been through it, understands what is could possibly happen. Hopefully things have gotten better. He's gotten vaccinated. I have, and everybody else have, feel a little more, more secure in himself and his surroundings. You will see the player at least, at least most much as you possibly can, the type of player that he was before. So, and he'd be the leader of the group, you know what I mean? 
uh, which comes with some pressure, but I, I believe he's the type of guy that can handle that, which can help bring those younger guys along. You know what I mean? So I honestly think that he, he should be fine. So Kendall, I have a question for you, if you don't mind. Um, mm -hmm. The loss of Marquise Pouncey up front, he wasn't just one of the best centers in the franchise's history, the long history of great centers. Mm -hmm. um, losing a guy like that, how many times have you seen him go to Ben's rescue, Cleveland, to Carolina? Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on losing a guy like that? And that's just like a big part. You see any guy specifically stepping up on the offensive line? We've seen DeCastro get fired up a few times before, but any thoughts on the loss of Pouncey? Well, it, it falls squarely on the Castro show. Like I said, it's one of the things where hopefully mentally he bounces back and he's the guy mentally that you that you are used to seeing. And it's just like age, you physically, you might not have the same abilities as you used to be, but mentally he could be that guy. Center is, to me, in my mind, is the most important position on the offensive line. Yes. Who can say left tackle, nope. that's fine. But if you got a great center like, you know, Damani Dawson's, you got Jeff Harden's, you got those type of guys, you got Pouncey. I absolutely love playing next to Jeff Harden's. Jeff controlled everything. I mean, there were times where Jeff checked the plays before Ben even checked the plays. He's telling him what to check to because he could see the entire field. And I know Pouncey probably did some of the same things. So it's probably hard to see Finney doing that and expecting that from him. So if the Castro can help, you know, shoulder some of that weight, it makes a world of a difference, man. It really would. And that was a great yeah. point too, with the with the way that you respect the centers. It's the way the Steelers respect the centers. I did an article earlier this year. The Steelers have had eight different starting centers since Ray Mansfield in 1959. So you go from Ransfield to Webster all the way through, overlap to Dermeni Dawson all the mm -hmm. way through. Then you got Hardings, you got Hartwig there in a couple of those, those years, Sean Mahan for a year, mm -hmm. and then draft Pouncey. And the rest has been history. So Steelers have always been very high in making sure that they make the right pick for them at center to be able to come in because they take it as seriously as they should. And I've always called the center a skill position player it, the center touches the ball he's the only person that touches the ball every play and yeah. he's got to snap the ball sometimes he's snapping it to a wide receiver coming around on, on a quick quick run behind or a direct snap to a running back but everybody thinks the quarterback always gets the ball no the center always touches the ball and there's nothing more important than that center quarterback exchange as well right. for maintaining ball possession and uh, not getting cheap turnovers unfortunately like we got in the, the first play of the playoff game this past year but that was just an unfortunate move that happened on that play but I'm in complete agreement that so great, great points on that Kendall. And, and thank you very much too, for joining us here. Uh, are you also ex uh, expecting to come back here in a little bit and try to follow us for the next pick? Yeah, I'll be there. You just text me. Let me know. Yes. I'm, I'm pretty sure my son going to have me going there playing switch and playing baseball with him in a minute. Oh, great. <laughs> Great. Yeah. You go enjoy your, your time with your son then. Thank you so much for joining us here for the pick. We love having a Steeler a Nation, a, a Pittsburgh Steeler alum here with us to get your insight. So can't wait to see you again come up here in a little bit. Thanks, Kendall. We'll see you soon. I appreciate it. Hey, I'm going to keep my eye on that tackle because he might still be there, man. I, I'm, I'm going to keep my eye on it since you brought it up with the, with the tackle. <laughs> I, I like that pick. That would be good. That would be good. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, awesome. Have a good one. I'll see y'all again in a little bit. All right. We'll see you real see you soon. soon. Thank you, Ken. Uh -huh.